one of our hosts. Um, and there it is. So we are now recording. Um, so please make sure to inform your organizations, your peers, um, anyone who wanted to be here who couldn't, that this uh, will be available after the fact. Uh, I wanted to start us off today um, by centering the goals of this webinar uh, and why so many of us have joined today. Um, and before I do that, I just want to mention a few um, accessibility items. Um, so as you might know, um, this webinar is also being offered in French. Alors, il va y avoir de l'interprétation en français um, par un service de téléconférence en ligne. Um, vous pouvez voir Lisanne de Interpares ici. Merci d'être ici avec nous, Lisanne. Um, et si vous avez besoin de, de l'interprétation en français, uh, vous devez juste appeler um, la ligne de conférence uh, qui est dans le chat ici. C'est 613-627-2411 pour ceux et celles qui sont à Ottawa et 416-764-8673 pour ceux et celles qui sont à Toronto. Um, if at any point you have trouble accessing this webinar, uh, please make sure to let us know. Um, information that is shared orally will be also put in the chat. I also want to acknowledge uh, and thank Ellen Moore from Earthworks, who is pictured below, um, who will wave shortly to, who is providing a simultaneous translation um, for our esteemed guests from Guatemala. Um, so as you folks know, the general gist of today's webinar is that we will have um, some contributions and insights shared by Indigenous land rights defenders uh, from both the Tsukoti Nation and Guatemala. Um, and we'll have a question and answer period after, uh, which is something we're really excited for um, to help build understanding and solidarity between our communities, which are so similarly affected across different continents. We hope to hear testimony from these communities about how Canadian mining companies and the Canadian government has been supporting these mining companies um, to the detriment of indigenous peoples. And we also want to reflect on the similarities between these struggles for indigenous self-determination. Um, our two countries, Canada and Guatemala, um, have a very similar pro-mining machine that uses consultation to legitimize the practices uh, rather than listening to communities when they say no, um, despite the many legal frameworks in place that give uh, importance to indigenous consent, uh, something that is promised under the UN Declaration for uh, the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and has been brought into British Columbia. Interestingly enough, we understand most, many of you uh, likely heard about that in the news uh, and tying those um, pieces of information into the struggles that are ongoing in these two areas. Uh, we also want to ensure broad um, in Pan-American silver, Canadian owned, mining company based here in Vancouver, uh, which bought a, which carries a leg long legacy of uh, Valendo and Don Celso um, to my left here will be telling you more about today. So we really hope that uh, today is a great learning opportunity for folks who have not been um, keeping up to date with the elements of the struggles faced by the Sikuti Nation and the Shinka community in Guatemala and we look forward to uh, the question and answer period. Um, again, please do uh, mention in the chat if folks are having any trouble hearing or um, participating. Wanted to also look at the bottom toolbar of the Zoom window includes various features, one of which is likely new to you. It says Q and A. It says between the participants button and the chat button. We know that everything is moved online to a large extent during COVID, uh, but we don't want to take for granted that uh, using this platform is not very easy for everyone. So um, I ask you to practice using that function. If you click, you can submit a question. And what will be happening is uh, one of our panelists uh, watch will be collecting these questions um, and will be due course. Um, so without further ado, the most important part, um, we are very, very excited to have with us uh, Don Celso and Luis Fernando, 
um, from Guatemala. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about them um, before they share with you um, who, a bit about themselves and why they're here. Uh, Don Celso Casuna Aquino was born on April 25th, 1970, in the community of El Carmen, in the municipality of Casillas, Santa Rosa, in Guatemala. He is a community leader, married to Oralia Lopez, and the father of four children, to whom he has taught Shinka values. Um, Don Celso, si quieres um, decir hola en el video, so that people know uh, that which one. Don Celso was wearing blue. Hola, Don Celso. He currently lives in the community of Los Planes in the municipality of San Rafael Las Flores, where the Escobar mine is located. He's a construction worker and is active in the defense of nature and of the rights of the Shinka culture at the service of his community. Since 2008, 12 years ago, he has participated in the peaceful resistance of the Shinka people in San Rafael Las Flores against the Escobar mining project, which threatens the customs, traditions, worldview, health and spirituality of the Shinka people. Don Celso's community delegated him to serve as one of 59 representatives who will participate in the pre-consultation and consultation as ordered by the Constitutional Court in its sentence dated September 13, 2018. And right now, um, our core struggle is to ensure that Pan American Silver does not use COVID-19 as an opportunity to continue what they're doing. Um, down in San Rafael Las Flores because, um, as you may know, the resistance camps have been disbanded due to the health risks associated um, with contact. Gracias para estar con nosotros, Don Celso. Um, to Don Celso's left is Luis Fernando, um, wearing red. Luis Fernando Garcia Mondroy is from San Rafael Las Flores and has been active in the resistance to the Escobar mine uh, for nearly a decade. Luis, his father, and other community members were working in a peaceful protest in 2013. He was a plaintiff in a lawsuit against Tahoe Resources, which is based in BC, uh, and which was concluded in mid-2019 through a settlement process. Currently, he works as a paralegal and community organizer with the Shinka Parliament. Muchas gracias, Don Celso y Luis Fernando, para estar con nosotros hoy. Um, we have a pre-recorded video, um, which we'll be showing shortly. Um, and at the end of uh, the two presentations, um, we will be having a question and answer period, which uh, Don Celso y Luis Garcia will be uh, participating in, uh, in a live format. So at this time, please turn your attention to the video. Thank you. Fernando García Monroy, actualmente soy miembro del, del Parlamento Xinca, eh, soy de San Rafael Las Flores, sobreviviente de un atentado ocasionado por el jefe de seguridad de empresa de minera San Rafael en el año 2013. Eh, bueno, actualmente el Parlamento del Pueblo Xinca ha venido trabajando arduamente durante, durante muchos años en la búsqueda de la reivindicación de los derechos del pueblo Xinca. Eh, actualmente, pues, en el año 2018 fue una lucha de eh, del pueblo del pueblo Xinca en defensa del territorio debido a que logró por primera vez suspender un proyecto y lograr una sentencia como es la sentencia 4785-2017 que fue, eh, fue dictada por la Corte de Constitucionalidad la cual establece que debe de parar operaciones mineras San Rafael durante no sea consultado el pueblo Xinca cabe resaltar que la lucha por la reivindicación del pueblo Xinca y la discriminación que ha venido existiendo de parte del Estado de Guatemala, pues ha traído a hacer, de más, a hacer eh, varias presiones, tanto en la ciudad capital como movimientos aquí en, en, en el territorio, demostrando al, al, demostrando al propio Estado que sí existe el pueblo Xinca. Ante esta situación, pues en esta sentencia eh, es una... Es una sentencia bastante histórica, ¿verdad?, porque se suspende un proyecto minero de gran magnitud como lo es el proyecto minero El Escobal, pero cabe resaltar que el pueblo Xinca ha sido víctima de muchos abusos, como por ejemplo atentados en contra de las personas que manifestamos en contra del proyecto minero, discriminación, persecución, incluso han habido hasta asesinatos de muchos compañeros líderes y representantes del pueblo Xinca, que el único delito que han tenido pues, es defender el territorio y luchar en contra del proyecto minero. Estos casos pues no han sido totalmente 
eh, no han tenido ninguna, ningún avance en el Ministerio Público. Hay muchos casos, hemos estado exigiendo justicia en el caso de, de, del atentado del 2013, aún el, el jefe de seguridad se encuentra prójudo de la justicia guatemalteca, se encuentra en Perú, estamos viendo de tal manera de exigir la extradición de Alberto Rotondo de Perú, que fue el jefe de seguridad que atentó en contra de nosotros. Cabe resaltar que toda esta lucha que ha tenido el pueblo Xinca, pues ha sido muy larga, más de 10 años de estar diciendo no al proyecto minero, aunque con esta sentencia eh, sabemos que tenemos la esperanza, ¿verdad?, que esta sentencia sea de buena fe y sin vicios, aunque prácticamente en el año 2018 y 2019 el Ministerio de Energía y Minas y el Ministerio de Ambiente y Recursos Naturales quiso llevar un proceso de consulta sin contar con el pueblo Xinca, discriminando, otra gran discriminación racial, por lo cual eh, se interpusieron varias denuncias en contra de los ministerios por discriminación. Esta, estas mesas de preconsulta que quería llevar a cabo, intentó llevar a cabo en dos ocasiones el Ministerio de, de Energía y Minas, una el 8 de agosto del 2019 y una segunda el 29 de agosto del mismo año. Estas demuestran la falta de voluntad y, y demuestran que el Estado únicamente respeta y, y vela por los intereses de las compañías mineras. Aunque sabemos que esta sentencia es histórica, no solo para el pueblo Xinca, sino que para los más, demás pueblos indígenas de Guatemala, aunque sabemos que nos enfrentamos a, a una gran situación. Hemos estado preparando, preparándonos como, como pueblo Xinca para llevar este proceso, este proceso de consulta de, de buena fe. Nosotros siempre velamos y exigimos que este proceso sea de buena fe, como lo establece tanto estándares internacionales como la misma sentencia. Queremos que este proceso sea pegado a derecho y sea de buena fe, ¿verdad? Para que este, eh, cabe resaltar que la sentencia pues, establece tres etapas de las cuales se debe llevar la consulta. De primero es la etapa de preconsulta, que es una donde se sientan todos los actores para, para ver los parámetros y analizar de qué manera se va a llevar a cabo la consulta. La segunda etapa pues, es la consulta y la, y la tercera pues, es una fecha de impugnación que la misma, en la misma sentencia lo establece, que debe de ser un periodo más o menos de 30 días. Ante esa situación, pues... Como pueblo Xinca seguimos manifestando nuestro rechazo. Cabe resaltar que no solo la sentencia del, del 3 de septiembre del 2018 tiene suspendido el proyecto minero. Cabe resaltar que nosotros como pueblo, como pueblo Xinca llevamos prácticamente llevamos tres años de estar en una resistencia permanente en el municipio de, de Casilla Santa Rosa y en el municipio de Mataquescuintra que llevamos dos años de estar en resistencia permanente. Debido a la situación de, de, de la pandemia del COVID-19, nos tocó que, que quitarnos de la resistencia pacífica de Casillas, pero aún estamos viendo las posibilidades de seguir, de seguir diciendo no al proyecto minero, aunque el proyecto minero ha tratado de, y han dado, incluso decían que Panamérica Silver no era lo mismo que Tango Resources, pero ha estado realizando las mismas acciones en las comunidades, y eso demuestra que eh, están actuando de mala fe, ¿verdad? han llegado a entregar unas, a, a sacar firmas a las comunidades, a crear más conflictos en nuestras comunidades. Ante esa situación, pues, seguimos en resistencia permanente acá en Mataquiscuintla, seguimos en Casillas, y sigue todo el, el pueblo Xinca manifestando su rotundo rechazo al proyecto minero, y lo que decimos, verdad, es que nosotros vamos por el consentimiento, necesitamos que se respeten los estándares internacionales, que se respeten nuestros derechos como pueblo, como pueblo Xinca, debido a que han habido muchos, muchos cambios, tanto en nuestra cultura, en nuestra espiritualidad, la, la, la división social que la empresa minera ha traído a nuestro territorio, los asesinatos, la criminalización, la persecución de nuestros líderes y lideresas del pueblo Xinca, pues esta es una demuestra que estas empresas no, no respetan los derechos humanos, sino que solo buscan el bienestar de sus bolsillos y de los inversionistas. Hacemos un llamado a todos los inversionistas que invierten en proyectos mineros, no solo aquí en Guatemala, sabemos que Panamérica Silver tiene proyectos mineros en Argentina, en otros países que prácticamente existe una resistencia igual como existe acá en Guatemala en contra del proyecto. Entonces sabemos y seguiremos presionando tanto a nivel internacional como a nivel nacional, haciendo las denuncias respectivas para que se respeten nuestros derechos como pueblos incas y que en realidad que se respete la voluntad del pueblo de decir sí o no a los proyectos mineros, sino la voluntad de unos pocos que solo se solo eh, tienen un poco nada más para, o buscan solo enriquecer sus bolsillos. Entonces, esas son eh, parte de todas las problemáticas que han habido en el territorio y esperamos que con esta sentencia y el actuar del gobierno sea de buena fe, como lo ha demostrado el pueblo Xinca. Todas las veces hemos dicho que se nos acepten nuestros representantes dentro del proceso de consulta. 
ellos dicen, no, deben de ser solo dos, pero sabemos que en base a nuestras propias formas de costumbres y tradiciones, el pueblo Xinca eligió a 59 representantes, que son los que hemos nombrado para que sean para que sean la voz de todo el territorio y que sean parte de este proceso de consulta. Lamentablemente, como decía, ¿verdad? no se ha visto una buena fe de parte, de, de parte del Estado a través de los ministerios, pero sabemos que tenemos la esperanza y tenemos la fuerza. Como decía Panamérica Silver, que tenía dinero para esperar 25 años, nosotros como pueblo Xinca, pues creemos que tenemos la fuerza para aguantar 100 años en resistencia. Muchas gracias. Mi nombre es Celso Kazum. Aquí me veo en la comunidad de los planes. Como, como Cocoy represento a la comunidad de, la, de los planes, que este, es parte pues, del casco urbano. Eh, y también pertenezco a, la, a lo que es el movimiento del, del pueblo Xinca, pues eh, Vivo aquí desde hace 35 años. Eh, la realidad de, de todo es que la empresa minera pues nos ha afectado en, muchos, en muchas maneras. Cuando yo vine aquí al municipio de San Rafael había abundante agua, eh, mucho trabajo, mientras que ahora verdad pues se siente la escasez del agua, eh, la escasez del trabajo, porque no hay mucho empleo. Y la realidad, yo platicaba un día con un señor de, de la empresa, él me dijo es que aquí es muy bonito, sí, la realidad de San Rafael de las Flores es bellísimo, no se puede decir más, pero ahora con el problema del agua, yo le decía que somos un 99% agua, nosotros necesitamos agua para vivir, necesitamos andar limpios, necesitamos para beber y necesitamos todo para poder subsistir. Entonces como pueblo Xinca, sí nos perjudican porque ellos gastan mucha agua, la tiran o la desperdician. Ahí donde ellos trabajan en la empresa hay un, un rollo de agua bastante abundante, casi 12 pulgadas de agua, mientras que nosotros en las comunidades pues tenemos demasiada, poquitía el agua. No hay, no hay abundante agua, sino que bien limitado. Eh, aquí donde yo vivo, la comunidad antes era abundante el agua, nunca faltaba, en cambio ahora tenemos cada dos días el vital líquido. Entonces, para nosotros como pueblo Xinca, eh, es más valiosa el agua que el, la plata y el oro. No tenemos precio pues para pagar el agua porque no, de dónde la sacamos, la tierrita no nos, no nos da, mientras que ellos, por como descargan profundo el agua, nos, o sea, ya rompieron el manto acuífero. A pesar de eso, tenemos el problema del agüita. Y también nosotros, con, conforme a los procesos que se ha llevado del, de la sentencia que se nos ha dado, ¿verdad? pues hemos visto la necesidad de fortalecernos como pueblo chinca, como pueblo indígena, porque la realidad, nosotros somos un pueblo eh, abundante, tenemos mucha gente como pueblo, pero nos han tenido escondidos, nos han querido limitar de, de todos nuestros re, recursos, de nuestras propias formas de vida. No nos han podido, cuando reparten las cosas del gobierno, nunca han mencionado al pueblo Xinca, sino que nos tienen aislados. Pues como pueblo, pues necesitamos eh, tanto la... No necesitamos del gobierno a decir que nos tenga como él quiere, porque ha, ha hecho muchas maneras de de podernos desaparecer, pero porque cuando fue el censo poblacional se vio, ellos dijeron no existen los incas y les demostramos que somos muchos y un pueblo numeroso que estamos luchando. Eh, como San Rafaelenses estamos haciendo las eh, eh, todo el, el proceso legal para poder tener la, eh, lo que ellos quieren, la consulta, pues nosotros estamos trabajando mucho para poder estar, para que no se violen nuestros derechos, para que ellos puedan informar como gobierno, para que nos puedan eh, explicar qué es lo que, lo que piensan hacer o lo que están haciendo. Referente a lo que hablábamos de las violaciones del gobierno y de todas las autoridades, ¿verdad? Nunca nos informaron cuando se instaló la la minera San Rafael, 
pues ahí hubieron violaciones a los derechos humanos, ¿verdad? Porque muchos se hicieron unos plantones que siempre el pueblo chinca no está de acuerdo a poder eh, hacer lo que el gobierno quiere por la fuerza. Este, se hizo el plantón en el 2013, hubo gente siempre en la resistencia pacífica, pero ellos siempre trataron, ¿verdad?, la manera de, de eh, que la empresa se instalara. Eh, también nos pusieron el, el estado de sitio donde vino a, a plantarse la, la empresa. Eh, también en el, la resistencia, pues, hubieron muchos... Eh, problemas, hubieron secuestros, hubieron muchas cosas que se dan, ¿verdad? Porque la gente no estaba de acuerdo y para podernos es, que si sí estuviéramos de acuerdo, pues nos pusieron el estado de sitio, porque ahí donde ellos se dieron cuenta, pues que el pueblo, aunque ellos lo han negado, como pueblo xinca hemos estado presentes. Y hemos estado desde el 2008, 2012, 2013, que hicieron todo esto ellos. Ahí hemos estado como pueblo, siempre trabajando como nuestras costumbres y nuestras tradiciones han sido de, de velar por nuestros, nuestra madre tierra. Eso es lo que a nosotros nos preocupa, ¿verdad? La, la tierra que, que Dios nos ha encomendado como parte de nuestra vida, poder trabajar. Aquí yo les he comentado a mucha gente, se da mucho, la tierra es bien fértil. Se da mucho la, la cosecha, el maíz, el frijol, tomate, chile y todo, porque las tierras son bien fértiles. Eh, después de todo esto, ¿verdad? Pues mm, hemos visto que la empresa ha trabajado en explotación ya tres años, les decía, y lo, la exploración, pues mm, eh, poco a poco, ¿verdad? Se fueron metiendo, eh, quizás con actualización de, de gobierno pero no de las comunidades. A nosotros no nos informaron, no nos preguntaron si estábamos de acuerdo a que la empresa trabajara. La tierra es nuestra casa común, donde siempre vivimos en ella y de ella. Hemos vivido siempre. Nunca hemos necesitado empresas mineras para poder trabajar, para poder vivir. Nosotros tenemos nuestras propias costumbres de trabajo y en esas estamos. Yo nunca he necesitado de la empresa para poder eh, ganarme unos mis centavitos y poder vivir. Dios nos da de comer, Dios nos da en abundancia, pero la bendita tierra es la que nos da. Entonces yo sí quiero recalcarles sobre esto, que ellos respeten lo que la corte dictó, que nos puedan anunciar por radio, por televisión, porque hasta el momento no han hecho nada. Abusivamente se meten a nuestras comunidades sin contar con ni con el alcalde ni con los cocores, que somos la parte de las, de las comunidades. Así es de que eh, quiero decirles, ¿verdad?, que, que comiencen a respetarnos. Somos un pueblo bastante grande y que sí, sí tenemos respeto a la ley pero que también ellos reconozcan que como pueblo eh, puedan eh, hacernos ver, sentir que somos dignos y que somos guatemaltecos. Muchas, muchas gracias Luis Fernando y Don Celso uh, para todo lo que han compartido. Uh, os agradecemos mucho. Uh, thank you so much, Luis Garcia, Luis Fernando, and Don Celso for your amazing contributions. I think I speak for us all when I say that um, this news is deeply concerning for those of us who are not aware already. Uh, and as Canadians, we have an obligation to ensure that the companies which um, are, on, are on Canadian you know, bankrolls that are uh, headquartered Uh, in Vancouver, where many of us are, um, uh, need to be held accountable because we as Canadians are uniquely positioned um, to speak out against um, these injustices um, that reign from outright uh, extrajudicial killings, kidnappings, and uh, polluting your water sources, things that um, are truly unconscionable. So thank you for your advocacy and thank you for sharing that with us. Um, for everyone who's here, just know that uh, You can still, again, plug your questions into the question and answer box. They will be compiled uh, and we can, we'll be answering them 
during the question and answer period. Um, pour ceux et celles qui participent en français, vous pouvez voir dans le chat, uh, Lisanne a mis un document avec uh, la transcription du vidéo qui a été en, en espagnol et en anglais. Alors, um, si vous n'êtes pas connecté au chat, uh, assurez-vous de, de connecter à la ligne conférence. Um, I was just informing folks that uh, the chat is where you need to go in case you are missing resources. Um, without further ado, I'm very excited to also introduce to you both uh, Blaine Grinder and Carmen Nunez Rodriguez from the Circuitin Nation. Um, they are here with us today and will be sharing with you shortly more about um, their struggles um, in the Tlaxcalco community in the Circuitin Nation. Um, and I'm very excited to tell you a little bit more about them. Uh, Blaine Grinder, who is to my right, and will wave. Uh, as an indigenous leader, leader of Tlaitenko, one of the six communities of the Tsukuti Nation. Uh, Blaine was asked by chiefs, by Blaine, as well as nation members to attend the delegation to represent them to share their fight, to protect their rights to clean water, and uh, protect the Stanbini, also known as Fish Lake, from mining. Uh, the Tsukuti Nation is looking to support others in their fight for clean water, get the message out internationally to keep the Canadian government accountable for their actions, um, and coordinated the environmental impact assessment against the Prosperity Mine for his community. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Blaine. Uh, next to Blaine is Maria del Carmen Nunez Rodriguez, um, and I'm looking forward to telling you a little bit about hers too. Hi, Carmen. Carmen has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from UAM in Mexico. When she was completing her studies, Carbon arrived to Canada for the first time in September 2004 as part of a rural development exchange uh, when she met Blaine. She moved to Canada in 2005 and has lived in Blaine's community since 2007, which is the Tletinko or Anaheim Reserve. Carbon became a Canadian resident in 2009 and a Canadian citizen in 2015. She completed a Master's of Arts degree in Integrated Studies with Athabasca University in 2017, with a dual focus on equality and global change. Uh, and participated in the resistance against Prosperity Mine and in solidarity with other Indigenous communities resisting the nearby pipeline projects. Um, I personally, as a law student, am very excited uh, to, that you folks are here because uh, we talk a lot about uh, the Tsilkonti Nation as a sort of uh, groundbreaking case in terms of uh, land rights in Canada, and I'm sure that that's something that uh, you folks have um, been working around and that your advocacy has contributed to. Um, so we're looking forward to hearing a bit more from you. And before we move on, uh, we just want to answer a question from the audience. Is Pan American Silver a Canadian company? Yes. In fact, something that I was hoping to mention is that Pan American Silver is uh, owned by Ross Beattie, who is the, also the owner of the Beattie Biodiversity Museum um, on UBC's campus. Um, this is when, when I learned it and, and our colleagues as well, we found something to be very concerning, uh, which is uh, the idea of greenwashing, where folks who are involved in what they call sustainable mining are able to convince large groups of people that their activities and resource management practices are ethical uh, by participating in select few environmental sustainability projects. Um, so in any case, thank you for that question. Um, and now I will happily pass it to Carmen and Blaine um, to tell us a little bit more uh, about their participation in the delegation to Guatemala, um, which happened uh, recently with Mining Watch uh, and the Guatemala chapter of Maritimes Breaking the Silence um, and reflecting on uh, the marks that were shared in the previous video from Don Celso and Luis Fernando. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Kareem, for the introduction. And uh, uh, Luis and everyone from Guatemala uh, and everyone tuning in, thanks for tuning in. Um, I didn't realize that we were going to be uh, hosting such a, a large audience. So thanks, to everyone out there, for uh, tuning in. Um, yeah, we. I was asked by the, by the chiefs to go down to Guatemala and um, and in my decision to do so, I wanted to bring my family down to Guatemala as well. And I thought it was important for for me to show that, you know, that uh, to show my family 
representing the support of the, the, uh, the other nations in Guatemala that have been fighting for their lands and waters as well. Um, for me, I guess the, the, the question, I could get into more of our fight here, uh, but I wanted to, I realized that, and I don't know if much, many people are informed in that, uh, in that uh, we, um, informed in this situation of the fish lake uh we've actually been fairly successful in the last couple of years in the protection of fish lake and i think you know we're we're not out of the we're not out of the we're still going to courts to prove our our uh, um i guess uh cultural um uh title to the area but uh, i don't i don't see that any other way than in our favor but at the same time um looking at the similarities between uh our nations and their nations is it, it, it comes down to water it comes down to our ability to protect our water and it comes down to our nation's uh ability to do what we just want to do with our water for future generations and uh it's as simple as that for me. I think uh, you know our our my experience. That was my third time, I believe, in Guatemala when we went down. So I had some background. I, I attended in 2012, I believe. I was in. I was with um, University of um, uh, UNBC uh, with ge with a, a geography class, and we. Got to see a lot of the. I, I was able to see a lot of the the history in Guatemala's history of colonization from from uh, outside companies and influence of uh, the U.S. But but now it seems like Canada is at the forefront in the in the in the colonization. I guess you could say of Guatemala. And uh, for me, I want I I really want to uh, you know first of all. Uh, you know, we, 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 I was quite impressed by the, the, uh, the Shinka's organization, how, how, how the government system worked. Uh, I was very impressed with their uh, strong leadership in their communities. Uh, and, and in many ways, uh, I found that they were even more ahead than we were, we are in that sense. But, uh, but on the other side of it, uh, that we, uh, I think we need to really look at supporting uh, the Shinka people and other nations of Guatemala in, 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 in having their basic human rights met. And I think, you know, here in Canada, uh, fortunately, politically, we have a voice here in this, and we've been, we've been successful with the title case as Kareem uh, spoke about and other things. And I think, you know, uh, and, and we never did it alone either. So for me, I'm like the the resistance. Our resistance was 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 in support of many people, and I think uh, uh, I know now with the whole uh, uh, COVID nineteen and everyone being. I think their question was, how are we being affected by social distancing? Yeah, we are definitely being affected by social distancing in our communities, but I think in places like Guatemala. They are they are more in a vulnerable situation than we are definitely uh, that, that here in Canada, and I think I don't know I'm I'm really interested in uh, uh, finding ways to support the Shinka either through the uh, when the trade opens up uh, we we were able to uh, to visit the communities with my family and uh, and. Uh, and for me, I'm re I was really impressed with how they were able to sustain themselves and, and the people, basically the people were just wanting to live on their land in the way that they wanted to. And I think it's, uh, and then the same with us here in our community. The similarities were, uh, I heard that the, the, the creek and the river that they, they used, they used to fish out of it and it's, it, it's and they have those type of memories of, of their water that way. And I think it's, um, and for myself, we, us being safe coating, we are, we are river people. So 
our connection to the water is really strong and uh, the a lot of the messages that I got when in our visit was was very similar to um, we, we had two panel hearings uh, environmental assessments for Fish Lake and most people spoke about having clean water for the future generations and it was it was a theme that we in every community that everyone uh, basically told us the same thing and that they're that they're willing to they're they're going to be fighting this right to the end regardless of what happens and uh and and that's how i i feel like we we despite us speaking english and spanish uh colonial languages our, our message never changed for the last 500 to 200 years of that uh, that 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 we we are here to protect our water we're here to protect our areas and uh and we're here to uh and if you're not willing to come to our territories or consent you're you're not welcome in our territories and that was a message uh that 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 we heard there and i think it's important that we continue to to uh to support our um our um our our people in other nations and uh and i was just mentioning to carmen that uh and uh, other people from the that that the people in guatemala they they uh we, we really felt at home in all the communities a lot of people look like our relatives from here as well so we uh i was really excited in that we thought that we were going to have some participants come up in may and I already talked to lead, uh, my leadership, and they were open to have uh, uh, somebody from the Shinka community come up and uh, and um, and visit our communities. But uh, I guess we'll have to wait for another time for that. Um, really, really, I want to. I'm really, really interested in uh, supporting the the communities in Guatemala. I, I believe. Um, one of the main exports is is coffee and i believe you know b back in the day our nations supported each, each other by uh, trade and i believe that that uh we we can support the shinka nation with trade as well and there could be other things that we have that we may be able to even to support them down there and vice versa and i think i think um that's we 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 went to the coffee uh the resistance coffee um farm there as well and i think uh it's it's just a way i think it's one way that we can support the the farmers and continue the uh, to support the resistance from here as well as of course putting pressure on our own um governments here um we we went to the embassy in guatemala as well while we were, were down there and uh and what i found interesting with that was that uh acting like a neutral body which obviously in my opinion they're not and i think it's uh i don't know i think there are definitely other ways we can support the nations on there is putting pressure on on the decision makers in our own countries as well so i I don't, I don't really have much more to say uh, right now, and uh, I'll pass it over to Carmen. Okay, uh, hi everyone. Um, first of all, I want, I want to express my uh, gratitude for uh, Luis Fernando and Don Celso, that I'm just happy to see you, and it was really good to hear your words in the video. It was some um, good connection. Uh, I paid attention uh, to that question about what similarities I find between those um, struggles for self-determination here, what I, I have uh, observed here um, in Guatemala, and, um, and uh, some words by Don Celso that he said, the way the Shinka understand themselves that what happens to one member of the nation it affects all the nation community you know and uh, 
um, is the same for us. Like uh, whatever is happening to the Shinka right now, however, uh, their issues are being um, ignored or or um, resolved. Uh, either way, uh, it affects us. That it's um, it's the same people. Like uh, I was thinking, um, you know, in Canada there is this uh, sort of narrative about reconciliation uh, with indigenous peoples but I'm thinking there is no reconciliation with Canadian First Nations uh, even if there is that injustice in other countries to other indigenous peoples such as the Shinka because uh, there is no separation uh, there is no distinction between First Nations here or there like uh, there is First Nations, that's it. And uh, I see, um, you know, also in Don Celso's words that uh, he's saying um, they should start respecting us. And I couldn't help but notice the word start because, <laughs> you know, it's about time it starts. But uh, uh, there is this um, sense of the disrespect of um, traditional ways of organizing. Luis Fernando mentions that too, that. Um, <clears throat> They are um, allowed um, two representatives when traditionally they would um, send 56 representatives. So I think uh, this shows just um, how even these uh, attempts or, or appearances of um, reconciliation, um, they, don't go, they don't go deep enough. They don't go to the core of it, which is to acknowledge um, the value of uh, these governments that are already there uh, previous to colonization and, and these values, uh, um, the values that indigenous peoples have. And I, I think that one is really um, important too for me uh, to hear the way that this um, view of the value of water, that the way that this is um, it's a, it's a living value, it's not theory, it's something that is lived, that is embodied in uh, everyday practices, everyday life of people that to appreciate that water and how unfair it is to go through scarcity, have water every two days uh, when it's being wasted on something that people there don't even want. And I think this is important too, the way Don Celso uh, worded that, um, that nobody was asking for, for the mine. Nobody, nobody wanted it. They were making a living in their own way. And these are words that I heard here too from the Tilkotin people when um, we gather to speak up to protect Fish Lake that um, eh, we would rather have uh, the traditional ways of life. We'd rather have hunting. We'd rather have fishing. We'd rather have the water um, to support life than to support mining that is not, it doesn't even bring a benefit to anybody here so it, it's just um i think it's important to um just go to that root of it the core that uh there is not yet um proper acknowledgement of uh the kind of authority that first nations have in their own land so what else another um some other notes of the similarities that um, also Don Celso said that how the Shinka have always been uh, in the struggle uh, to protect their land. And this is something that um, it's not just about uh, this particular mine, it's about um, really the resistance to maintain and protect indigenous identity, indigenous uh, livelihoods and um, because um, the traditional forms of life, like in the case of Guatemala or in the case of the Shinka communities, there is agriculture that is dependent on that access to water. And then there is so much of the culture is um, comes from that, that way of life, that agricultural way of life that, uh, you know, changing the to a mining camp, like to changing that, it, it's not only hurting the natural resources um, or so-called resources, it's, uh, it touches directly um, the culture. It, it threatens the identity and the culture of the indigenous peoples. And uh, 
it's interesting to me and important how it's interlinked. It's always together. What happens to the land it happens to the people of that land. And um, it, it, it's um, we protect not just the land. We protect the people. We protect the culture. We protect the land. They are together always. Uh, so when you fight to protect the water, uh, you are fighting to protect your freedom. You are fighting to protect your autonomy, your sovereignty. That, uh, and I think it's a. Uh, I want to say how, um, like, it's not over. Like, um, in my, I know in my education, I was shown or taught about indigenous cultures, like, like it's in the past. Uh, you know whatever their culture was and then also whatever the struggle was it's always uh, t taught like it's something past and we're moving on and ahead and uh, <laughs> through through the years like i've had to unlearn that i've had to unlearn that like uh discard that kind of misinformation and realize how um indigenous nations never gave up their sovereignty that that's a myth like that it was never undone somehow like there is no coercion uh into treaties there is there is nothing that was done that could have um somehow neutralized indigenous sovereignty or indigenous identity like that it's some sort of myth that uh, i think it's important to be solved uh, once and for all and also as kareem first introduced himself to really um see how it, it's it's an ongoing violence and then the ways that um you know the colonies continue uh and i feel that the core uh of that ongoing violence is certainly that um lack of respect that um is mentioned that don Ceso mentions that luis fernando mentions that there is a uh, some kind of core uh essential lack of respect um i'm also gonna say how um also, Don Celso mentions the state of, um, uh, how do they call it, like uh, when there's police, when there's military, um, uh, engaging like in, uh, to force uh, a consent. It's almost like, okay, you don't consent, so we'll, we'll bring in police and, and army and we'll see if you consent then. No? So there is, a, there is always this threat of um, force uh, and then, just to see it like through the lens of what's going on right now with the pandemic uh, is one of the things that worries me is um, how, you know, how, how we kind of rely on that same um, authoritarian way or um, that kind of um, forceful way to maintain um, safety. But, uh, you know, it has two sides. So I am concerned about um, things happening under the guise of uh, safety, like protecting our health, but uh, using police to do that, or, you know, it's, it's a concern. I'm, I'm, I'm scared of that. I, um, I've seen some information from people who are involved in the resistance up north, the resistance to the pipeline that they're trying to build still, and how, you know, well, now we can't gather to protest. Now we, you know, we gotta stay home now. Um, but these actions to bring in the workers and, and continue on with those camps, uh, they're not stopping. So uh, I am certainly concerned about uh, what can happen uh, there, like from the isolation, like what, what how are, resistance is being affected by the isolation no and how it, it could be um justified or uh, it could be said to be justified in the in the name of safety so um, i also i like the words about um don Celso said says uh we don't need the government to so they have us the way they want you know that they've tried uh, every way to disappear uh, the ways of life of the shinka and uh, I think this is um, definitely something across the board, across borders. That's the that's the story of colonization. No, that uh, attempt to erase or disappear uh, indigenous identities. And uh, there's another point uh, to just to finish that I I found it really interesting how um, 
Don Celso mentions uh, and says, we are also Guatemalans, like we, that there, there is no acknowledgement of that other layer of the um, political and historical identities of uh, these First Nations, that they are also Guatemalan citizens, no? And that they're not being given even that status properly, that respect. So I think this is an interesting topic because um, I don't think it's like a is resolved in Canada or anywhere. Just kind of how that works, like how First Nations maintain their sovereignty and their identity, and are still waiting for and expecting uh, that full respect as as nations, are true as true nations, not little subordinate little things, but actual nations like equals. That we're still waiting for that, but then that that also doesn't take away um, sort of the power or respect as, as um, in that interaction as Canadians, no? Like, I think this is, this one is complex, but I, I found it very interesting that Don Soso mentioned that, and I think it's worth uh, thinking about that. Um, another, and anyway, I've seen um, the similarities with the, what I witnessed here is uh, that, that sense that, um, really what what sparked the resistance here was that per, clear uh, perception of that um contempt that how the people of the seco mines uh, i i went to watch one of the presentations before the panel hearings before any of that and they were advertising the mine like it was a done deal they were they were advertising like they had it like and they even i remember them even saying oh there's been consultation like that's done. Like there was such a blindness to um, where did Silk Rotting people stand in protecting their land. There was such a blindness, and it was contempt. And I, um, I also want to take um, Luis Fernando's words that uh, the most important for me is how he he uses the words uh, racial discrimination. And I think uh, this is not always even acknowledged how the basis of this injustice is really going back to that racist uh, worldview that somehow the racist uh, belief is still operating behind all of these actions that ignore, disrespect, um, try to take over. Like there is like a really basic sort of. Um, um, a basic thing that, that we're not like as Canada, Canada is still uh, not valuing the lives of First Nations peoples in the same like as the same value as uh, other uh, other peoples, white peoples, uh, Europeans or whatever. Like there's still a there's still that divide, and uh, it's hard to talk about it because it's very anachronic. <laughs> like it's kind of old backwards terms that I would have to use, but um, it's still there. Uh, and I think it's important to um, see all these issues in that well. Uh, so this is what I have to say. Also how, um, do you know, there, there are already ways of livelihood, traditional ways of livelihood that uh, have sustained. Um, the Shinka, uh, just as the Tilkoti, and there are traditional ways that have sustained life here. There is no um, change that, like, <laughs> you know, that nobody's asking to change that here. And that's kind of what I have to say right now. I hope that was okay. So thank you. Um, I have one, yeah. one last one. Yeah. yeah. So um, just, just one last thought for me was, uh, is that the Shinka people, have, have the rights to choose how they want to live, you know, in, in our small amount of time I'm there, you know, I have memory, I have memories of seeing children and families working on their farms and pulling out all their, their food. And then I, I had the thought, it was like, what if, you know, and now, now when things are bad, at, at least they have the ability to sustain themselves right now. Mm -hmm. At least they have water, whatever they have, they have the ability to sustain themselves. And, uh, and it's the same thing for us. We're in a situation where we, what if, what if we don't have a grocery store anymore and our clean water is what's going to save us. 
and I think that's a you know it just comes on to that and then and the other thing too is one one of the things that made us really successful is uh we had an independent environmental assessment with the federal government come to all the communities so we the the the, the company had to face us and I think that was a very we we were so good at it that they they've gutted that program right now but my point is is that to to be able to take over whatever they give us and and own it and 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 even though it was it, it was designed to manipulate us or take our resources and and I believe the Shinka have already done that and that's the reason that you know their governments is are doing their best to discredit them and the company but I think I think they I have to commend them and that that they're that they're uh, in some ways they're way ahead of us. And I was very impressed, and uh, and I think uh, down the road it would be good to have a delegation from one way I'd love to support is to continue to to support and trade because our we we went to war and we've supported other nations historically through trade, and I think that's something that that I I believe is because uh, here we have uh, we have social assistance we have. You know, even during the COVID, people are still getting money. And so, but I, I, when, when I believe they're, they're definitely new the trade support to the Shinko people as well as, uh, you know, and, and let them decide how, how, um, how they, uh, how, how they want us to help them. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Wow, thank you much, so much for sharing uh, your insights and experiences, Blaine and Carmen. Um, I think I speak for all of us when I say that uh, it's really no surprise why over 35 organizations have endorsed this webinar to hear you folks speak and share your experiences because uh, as you described, um, people's livelihoods are on the line uh, and communities uh, are facing increasing repression, uh, especially during COVID um, due to the ongoing activity of these highly colonial um, operations on behalf of Canadian companies. People have been asking a lot of questions because undoubtedly what you've been sharing um, has sparked a lot of interest. Um, so we'll go one by one. Um, and the first question is very brief. And someone was wondering um, what companies are operating in Shinka territory. Uh, and we just want to let folks know. So that is Pan American Silver, Vancouver owned um, and um, Canadian uh, company that has been there. Um, said the mine has been there for uh, over a decade, and uh, Pan American Silver just bought the mine, um, and is claiming that uh, they are an example of sustainable mining. Um, Esa pregunta es para Luis Fernando y Don Celso. The question is, um, how has COVID been affecting you, and um, how has the company been taking advantage? of the pandemic to get a foothold in communities? And what are your concerns with respect to the ongoing consultation process in this context? Thank you, Ellen. Bueno, la pregunta es para Luis Fernando y Don Celso. Eh, la pregunta es, ¿cómo es que la coronavirus, el COVID, les está afectando a ustedes? Eh, ¿Cómo han visto que la empresa está intentando aprovechar de la crisis? ¿Y cuáles son sus preocupaciones sobre, sobre cómo puede afectar al proceso de consulta? Ustedes tienen que quitar su, su mute en el micrófono del, del sonido. Eh, sí, el, el problema nos, nos ocasiona, ¿verdad?, por, por la visita de las comunidades y pues le, que a las gentes, a las personas, pues les pidan el número de DPI. Y como son tan, así, disculpen la palabra, tan racistas o tan sinvergüenzas que no, que toman en cuenta como que si es una consulta, ¿verdad? Entonces nosotros lo que queremos es de que, que ellos paren, pues, de entregar pequeños insectivos a las comunidades. Mm -hmm. Si tanto tienen, pues que lo den a la municipalidad o al gobierno, que él es el responsable de velar por nuestra salud y por la alimentación del, del pueblo en sí. 
So the, the problem that we're seeing mostly is that the company, the mining company, um, is visiting communities. Um, they're giving out food and other things, and they're asking people for their identification number and their signature. Um, and I'm, I'm afraid, I don't want to say this, but um, I have to say that they're so racist. Um, they don't have any shame um, in doing this. Um, and, and they would like to be able to count this or say that what they're doing is, is a consultation process, but it's not. Um, and so what we want is for them to stop doing that. And if they have so many resources to give out that they should direct that toward the municipality and not be giving it out individually in communities. Hola, hola a todos. Eh, mi nombre es Luis Fernando. Eh, un saludo del pueblo de Xinca. Muchas gracias por participar en la reunión. Eh, bueno, el problema de, del coronavirus sabemos que es una pan, pandemia a nivel mundial, pero en nuestras comunidades Esto lo está utilizando la empresa minera, especialmente Pan America Silver, igual que Tajo Resources, cuando empezaba a regalar algunos víveres en nuestras comunidades. Y después estos víveres o, eh, eran utilizados con las firmas de, del documento de identificación de todas las personas para utilizarlos como que ya habían realizado un proceso de consulta. Y eso nos preocupa porque están creando conflictos en nuestras comunidades, más conflictos, más división social porque en todas las comunidades de San Rafael Las Flores y de los demás municipios donde eh, tiene influencia el proyecto minero, pues totalmente toda la población pues está en contra del proyecto. ¿verdad? Y esto, esto genera más conflictividad en la zona de estas acciones de Panamérica Silver, más conflictividad, más división social y más problemas en nuestras comunidades. My name is Luis Fernando. Um, I send my greetings from the Shinka people. Um, and thank you so much for coming. The problem of the coronavirus, and we know that this is a, a worldwide pandemic, um, but the problem for us is that the Pan American Silver, in the same way that Tahoe Resources, is going around and giving out food um, or giving out other types of goods, um, and that they try to use this sort of, um, these sorts of actions or, or giving out these sorts of things to demonstrate that they've carried out a consultation process or they have a relationship with communities and they don't like that. Um, them going into communities creates conflict, it creates social division. Um, all of the, com the communities in San Rafael, the other communities where the mine has influence or where they try to have influence are um, totally against the project and so the fact that the company continue, continues, Pan American Silver continues to insist in going into communities to do these types of projects. It just creates more conf, conflict, conflictivity or conflict in more problems. Muchas gracias, Luis Fernando y Don Celso. Um, this, friends, uh, is even more reason to take action today. We've heard over and over um, the effects that uh, the activities of companies like Pan American Silver has had on our communities. Um, and we want to let folks know that uh, our digital campaign to target Pan American Silver, whose AGM annual general meeting will be held in less than two weeks, um, has launched today. So please check the chat. Uh, we have an entire set of uh, pre-made tweets and, and a letter sending website. Uh, which you can just click even perhaps while listening today um, to, to send them a strong message to the owners of Pan American Silver um, that we as not just Canadians but uh, members of our global community do not stand for the kind of repression that has been ongoing in this community for over a decade, especially in the context of COVID. Um, we do not accept um, that kind of taking advantage of the pandemic to further these goals. Entonces, lo que dice que lo que estamos escuchando eh, de todos los compañeros es que nos da más eh, razones de tomar acción hoy en, en apoyo al pueblo Xinca. Hemos escuchado de los impactos de las empresas como Pan American Silver que, y queremos que todos sepan que hoy estamos lanzando una acción en línea. Eh, vamos a poner la información en el, en el box de chat, que en dos semanas eh, la empresa Pan American va a celebrar su reunión de accionistas. Entonces, ahí mismo eh, en la acción, en el chat, pueden mandar unos tweets, pueden tomar acción, pueden mandar correos a la empresa y asegurar que los mensajes del pueblo están llegando uh, a Pan American Silver y que sepan que canadienses y todos los miembros de la comunidad global están en contra de ese tipo de represión, especialmente en esos momentos de la coronavirus. Thank you, Alan. Muchas gracias. Um, now we have uh, two questions, uh, which hopefully uh, Blaine and Carmen 
Uh, you can answer it together. Um, and they're as follows. So firstly, how have you seen your transnational indigenous solidarity networks strengthen? And how are these different from non-indigenous support that you've received? Um, and is there anything that we can do to uh, take action to support the, support the Tsukotin struggles around Testanbini? Entonces, la pregunta ahora es para Blaine y Carly, que lo van a contestar juntos. Um, como pre pregunta es, ¿cómo han visto que su red de solidaridad transnacional ha sido um, fortalecido? ¿Y cómo es diferente que, que apoyo que reciben de los pueblos no indígenas? ¿Y qué es lo que podemos hacer nosotros también para apoyar a su lucha? Okay. Uh, yeah, just looking at the question, uh, have you seen? You know your transition yeah for sure uh i think the wilderness community uh at some point uh to seek mines went after them for defamation i believe and then um, they went back to court and then they lost against uh, and then i believe our our um our support from the outside we you know we we would have never been able to do this alone you know we had we had so much support from other nations. We had so much support from other organizations that we, uh, you know, and, and, it, and it just uh, continued on. Um, you know, so uh, I think uh, for myself, I think the, the, the support is definitely needed, but at the same time, I think, you know, it's, uh, it, it always has to be directed to the nations themselves. Uh, and I think what most of you are, I, I would say pretty much 99% of everyone is very respectful that way. But I think, you know, uh, we always have to be aware of other people's agendas. In some ways, uh, I feel like the, the other environmental uh, groups and stuff are parallel. We're going in the same direction, but sometimes their objectives may not be always the same as ours, but at the same time, uh, you know, uh, Right now, you know, even even with our issues with other nations in the past, uh, all those, all we 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 have the same values with our waters and lands that, that the support from our indigenous um, uh, solidarity networks were solid. In that way, uh, I, you know, we I'm really grateful for how our process went, and and we were great, and I was grateful for the company because the company continued to basically shoot itself in the foot we and all we had to do is react to that and uh, but I know the situation in Guatemala is a lot different and uh, I think one of the things that uh, that backfired to us was that I believe now um, companies can't give political contributions to um, to uh, uh, government leadership I think that's a big thing as well to look at pushing for places like Guatemala to have that ban because of course uh, uh, you know uh, that that make that that uh, that hurt us here and I'm sure it's hurting Guatemala even more so um, so what uh, I would answer um, is that um, I think when uh, there's this communication between um, indigenous nations there is a uh, there is a commonality there. There is um, true equality there. That uh, it's not always accessible to someone, even like me. I didn't grow up in an indigenous community, or even even um, to people, um, you know, different uh, different nationalities, different uh, different backgrounds, different histories. Even to people that uh, work for the Tsukoti Nation or work for the Shinka, like there is there is always that. Um, the risk that uh, that we'll misunderstand. There's always that risk that we we will not stay uh, in that horizontal sort of way uh, of equality. No, and especially when it comes to health. No, even the word health. Like, um, how much is it help or how much is it uh, taking responsibility? You know. So even even our wording of things, uh, we are at risk of uh, reproducing. Um, colonial values, a, a colonial uh, way of education that we received. So I think that one's important to always keep in mind because we are, we are bound to face that uh, within ourselves. 
and um, you know, uh, we I would say the best way to support um, all uh, indigenous uh, efforts to for sovereignty and self determination. Like what we can all do is continue on engaging um, with that process of decolonization, decolonizing ourselves, decolonizing our thoughts, decolonizing. Our, it's a, it's a continuous thing to undo uh, the really the impacts that those values have on all of us. So I'll keep it short that way. Thank you. Eh, compartió Blaine, eh, dijo que, que fue un, un momento en que la, la mina que se llama Tasico atacó a la comunidad que, que apoya como a, a los lugares eh, salvajes, o sea, como las áreas verdes, los bosques, y los atacó por defamación. Eh, y fueron a, la, a las cortes y perdieron a final de cuentas. Eh, pero yo creo que el apoyo que hemos recibido de afuera es muy importante. Nunca lo podríamos haber hecho o logrado lo que hemos logrado solos. El apoyo de otras organizaciones, otros pueblos sigue creciendo y siempre el apoyo es nece siempre necesitamos el apoyo. Pero es importante que el apoyo o la solidaridad va dirigido directamente a los pueblos. Eh, hemos visto que 99% de las personas es, eh, están respetuosos, eh, pero hay que siempre tener en cuenta, siempre estar atento a a la agenda uh, que lleva a la otra gente, o sea, a los deseos que lleva a la otra gente. Eh, hemos visto que en general los grupos de ambientalistas están trabajando en, en paralelo con nosotros, o sea, en sintonía, pero a veces eh, tienen objetivos que son diferentes que los nuestros. Entonces, eh, ahora hemos visto que a veces hemos tenido desacuerdos con otros pueblos de Canadá, por ejemplo, pero en, eh, lo, en lo fundamental tenemos, compartimos los mismos valores. Eh, entonces, por eso nuestras redes de solidaridad indígenas han crecido y estamos muy agradecidos por este proceso eh, y en nuestro caso la empresa minera siempre se mete la pata pues eh, entonces eso ha sido nuestra lucha de reaccionar a como ellos están metiendo la pata y sabemos que la situación en guatemala es diferente eh, una cosa que es importante es que las empresas aquí no pueden dar dinero, no pueden aportar a los, a los partidos políticos y al gobierno y eso nos ha, eh, ha sido muy importante y podría ser algo que habría que tomar en cuenta o empujar allá en Guatemala porque eso puede ser algo que les está afectando. Lo que compartió Carmen es que que la comunicación entre los pueblos indígenas eh, eh, que, que comunican y que están eh, intercambiando como iguales es muy importante, siempre compartiendo sus valores así compartidos y que eso a veces, o sea, eso no es accesible a alguien como yo, eh, que no creció en una comunidad indígena, que viene de otro lado y que siempre hay riesgo que no vamos a entender la gente que no somos del mismo pueblo indígena. Pero siempre hay que buscar mantener la, la forma horizontal eh, de, de tener interacciones, ¿verdad? Y siempre también como pensar en la palabra ayuda, cómo eso eh, puede, se, como puede ser tomado de una, en una mala forma y puede tener ciertos impactos y que podemos estar reproduciendo los mismos valores coloniales que nos está causando represión y, y, e impactos. Muchas gracias para vuestras respuestas. Thank you so much for your answers. Um, I think a lot of what you folks have already said uh, reminds us that these struggles are costly, they're time consuming, and they last decades at a time. Um, and that's if the communities are successful in resisting the, the constant repression of the companies and governments. So uh, to answer a question that was just posed by one of our attendees, what more can you do? Well, it's uh, beyond the digital campaign and buying the coffee. Um, we ask you folks, if you can, to uh, try to fund the legal fund of uh, the Shinka community. We just in the chat just plugged in uh, a crowdfunding campaign that was recently launched. And we're hoping to be able to fund the Shinka community's legal fees for uh, years into the future. Because as we have seen, um, these struggles are longstanding and expensive, uh, and forcing our communities uh, into um, difficult financial circumstances. So uh, please consider donating and sharing with your communities. Uh, moving on to um, further questions. Um, we'll move back to Luis, Fernando, and Ido and Celso. Um, so first off, uh, there, there are three questions here. Um, one is about the same question as before about transnational indigenous solidarity networks uh, and how this has been different 
from non-Indigenous support that they have received. Um, our audience also wants to know what message the Shinka community wants to send Pan American Silver. And the last question for now is um, about if the mining companies who have been uh, who the who have bought out the national Guatemalan government, um, they're wondering if they also have allies within your own communities trying to bring division. Uh, we know you have mentioned that a little bit earlier, um, but wanted to re-ask for precision. Gracias. Well, the pregunta is para ustedes, Luis Fernando y Don Celso. Um, solo primero, antes de la pregunta, dijo que sabemos que estas luchas duran mucho tiempo y cuestan mucho dinero. Entonces, si la gente quiere apoyar más, pueden donar a un fondo para apoyar a los costos legales que tiene el Parlamento Xinca. Um, la pregunta para ustedes, o oh, hay tres preguntas. La primera es lo mismo como que contestó Blaine y Carmen eh, sobre las redes eh, de solidaridad internacionales, ¿verdad? Y cómo estas redes de solidaridad internacional son diferentes que el apoyo que reciben dentro de su, del mismo pueblo indígena, puede con el pueblo maya de Guatemala, otro pueblo xinca, otros pueblos indígenas de otros lugares. ¿Cómo es este tipo? ¿Cómo es la solidaridad internacional o transnacional diferente? Um, uno, dos, eh, ¿qué mensaje el pueblo xinca quiere mandar a la empresa Pan American Silver? Y tres, um, sabemos que las empresas mineras están muy metidas, han comprado, se puede decir, al gobierno de Guatemala. Um, la pregunta es si ustedes um, han visto o nos puede compartir que también la empresa um, tiene apoyo o tienen aliados um, en las mismas comunidades y eso, si eso causa división, ustedes ya lo mencionaron un poquito. Adelante, ustedes están en mute todavía. Está. Bueno. Muchas gracias por las, las preguntas y agradecemos también a, a Carmen y a Glenn que estuvieron compartiendo acá con nosotros. Bueno, vamos a tratar de resumir un poco. En este caso, pues la, la solidaridad internacional eh, que hemos tenido como pueblo, como pueblo Xinca nos ha ayudado mucho para, para seguir denunciando eh, en diferentes partes, ¿verdad? Las violaciones a derechos humanos que ha realizado la empresa minera en nuestro territorio. Además, nos hemos estado aglutinando en gran magnitud con demás pueblos indígenas para tratar de hacerle frente a las, a las políticas del Estado de Guatemala. Hace un par de, de meses quisieron eh, pasar una, una política, una política acá en Guatemala, crear una ley para regular las consultas. Y esto sabemos que va en, en contra de los estándares internacionales, en contra de la voluntad de los derechos del pueblo, de los pueblos indígenas. Um. What Luis Fernando said was, thank you so much for your questions. Thanks also to Carmen and Blaine for sharing with us. Um, the international solidarity that we've had as Shinka people has been really important. It has allowed us to continue to denounce um, the different types of human rights violations that we've suffered um, due to the imposition from the, the mining company. Um, and we've also been working hard to form alliances and to strengthen our networks with other um, indigenous groups in Guatemala um, in order to have a united front against this, the government of Guatemala. Just a few months ago, the government was looking to pass a law that would regulate consultation. And we know that this type of regulation of consultation goes against international standards and it also goes against um, what indigenous people want. Yes. Nuestro mensaje como, como pueblo Xinca a, hacia los, especialmente a los inversionistas, ¿verdad? sabemos que hay muchas personas que invierten en proyectos mineros, no solo acá en Guatemala, sino que en muchos países, ¿verdad? donde tenemos este gran problema de, extrac de extracción y despojo de nuestros recursos naturales. Eh, nuestras comunidades, en el caso de Guatemala, las comunidades indígenas han sido las más afectadas por proyectos extractivos con capital canadiense y parte de Estados Unidos. Sabemos que eh, en este caso, pues, un llamado a los inversionistas que en primer lugar, que analicen en qué van a invertir su plata. Sabemos que hay muchos pensionistas, en el caso de Canadá tiene muchos pensiones. Hay muchas pensiones que los fondos de estas pensiones vienen directamente a, a criar y a, 
eh, a invertir el dinero, ¿verdad?, en este tipo de proyectos. Mientras que eh, los inversionistas, los accionistas reciben una cantidad de dinero de ganancia, nosotros como comunidades indígenas, lo que recibimos es una gran escasez de agua, contaminación, destrucción y muerte de nuestros líderes y lideresas de, de los pueblos que nos oponemos a los proyectos. Sabemos que enfrentamos un proceso de consulta, hacemos un llamado también a los inversionistas que, rep que respeten el consentimiento de los pueblos, que no, que no traten de, de ver este proceso como un paso administrativo, ya que como pueblos indígenas lo vemos como el consentimiento, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, el mensaje directo para los inversionistas es que piensen en qué van a invertir su plata en nuestros países, ¿verdad? So the message that we have as Shinka people, um, we, we often also want to direct our messages to the investors, um, the type of investors who are investing in these types of projects in Guatemala, and we know that they're investing in projects in, in countries all over the world. Um, and we also know that indigenous communities are the ones who are the most affected by these types of extractive pro projects that are funded by Canadian and also US capital. And we know that um, there's also, it's, it's important that they analyze um, where they're putting their money. We know that there's a lot of pension funds um, that come and they invest their money in these types of projects and they're earning money. Um, and then, so they're taking that money out and what's left, um, what indigenous communities are receiving is water shortages, um, water contamination, death and repression. We also know that we're facing a consultation process and so we're, we're calling um, on Pan American Silver and on the investors to respect our right to consent um, and that they don't try to only make this consultation process an administrative process. Um, what we want and what we need is um, for them to respect our right to consent um, and that we send our me the message that we send and to investors is to think about how they're investing their money. Muchas gracias para vuestras respuestas. Thank you so much for your answers. The, we have a few more questions around strategy. Um, and this question will also go to Luis Fernando y Don Celso. And it has three parts. Um, so the first part of this question um, is about dialogue with the companies. Um, is it possible? Does the Shinka Parliament have any concrete proposal or strategy to have conflict with Pan American Silver? Um, is it a problem that the Shinka are depending on the courts to uphold the law? Uh, and the final question is, how do you deal with the impacts on water quality and quantity in relation to your communities which are threatened by mining. Gracias. Was the end of the first question, Karim, was how does, does the Shinka Parliament have proposals or strategy to what? Um, to engage with um, Pan American Silver in dialogue. Entonces, um, también hay otra pregunta para Luis Fernando y Don Celso. Eh, también tiene, hay tres preguntas básicamente. La primera eh, es si el, diólogo es, si el diólogo con la empresa es posible y si el Parlamento Xinca tiene una propuesta, una estrategia para llevar a cabo un diálogo con la empresa. Uno, dos, eh, si es un problema que el pueblo Xinca está dependiendo de las cortes para cumplir con la ley, que, que, que se cumplen. Um, y cómo es que ustedes como pueblo Shinga están lidiando o enfrentando los impactos que la empresa tiene o tuvo en la calidad de agua y la cantidad de agua o escasez de agua. Si están hablando están en mute. Sí, perdón. Este... Y contesten la parte que o lo que ustedes quieren contestar. Ah, va. Muchas gracias. En este caso, pues, eh, eh, cuando hablamos de, de diálogo, pues creo que la sentencia 4785-2017, donde suspende en forma provisional el proyecto minero an, an, antes de que se an, eh, que a, a, se debe de agotar el proceso de consulta para que eh, la empresa vuelva a funcionar. En este caso, pues, consideramos nosotros como pueblo de Xinca que 
prácticamente pues el diálogo, en esta parte no existiría el diálogo porque la sentencia es clara, ¿verdad? Es que debe de ser el proceso de consulta, debe de ser entre Estado y el pueblo Xinca, entonces en este caso no tendría nada que ver la empresa minera, ¿verdad? Ni, ni el pueblo Xinca pues está en la, en la disposición de llegar a algún diálogo con la empresa minera, sino que nosotros lo que exigimos es que se cumpla la sentencia emitida por la Corte de Constitucionalidad. So when we're talking about dialogue, um, it's, we always go back to the constitutional court decision, which suspended provisionally the consultation process while, or suspended the, the mining project while the consultation process was ongoing. Um, and so um, we consider that during this consultation process in particular, there is no possibility for dial dialogue with the company. The sentence is really clear um, that any, the, that the consultation process should take place between the government and the Shinka pe people. Um, and there's no need or, or, or mechanism for there to be dialogue with the company. Um, and what we're actually, what we're really demanding is that that um, sentence, the constitutional court sentence that outlines the, co the consultation process be respected. Sí. Eh, sí, yo pienso, verdad, como pueblo Xinca, pensamos pues que nosotros en ningún momento estamos disponibles o dispuestos a, a platicar, verdad, con la empresa minera o tener un diálogo, mientras que el problema La corte fue clara al decir que era entre Estado y población Xinca. Entonces, eh, la empresa, pues nosotros no queremos ningún diálogo, ninguna mesa para dialogar con ellos. Mientras tanto, que ellos nos han agredido tanto a nuestra gente, a nuestras comunidades. Eh, incluso, ustedes ya ven el caso de Luis Fernando, pues en Canadá. Pues para nosotros es muy, muy lamentable, ¿verdad? Porque muchas veces nuestra, nuestra raza es nuestra gente, nuestras costumbres y nosotros somos muy diferentes. Ya ellos decían, ¿verdad? En, en muchas ocasiones nos han atacado directamente metiéndonos el estado de sitio, baleándonos a nuestra, nuestra misma gente. En cuanto que muchas veces ellos quieren diálogo, que nos sentemos a dialogar. Si nuestra gente no es basura, nuestra gente no es garbage para en inglés, no es garbage para que solo nos agarren y nos tiren, sino que nos tienen que comenzar a respetar como pueblo y nosotros no, no tenemos pues un diálogo con la empresa, sino que sea únicamente con la población Xinca y el Estado de Guatemala. As the Xinca people, um, we believe that in no moment are we open for for talking or to have dialogue. The constitutional court decision was clear that the, the process needs to take place between the state and the Shinka people. Um, and so we don't want any dialogue. It's also important to note that we've been um, attacked. Our people and our communities have been attacked. Look at the case of Luis Fernando, who, who took the, the, his case all the way to Canada. Um, and that's really upsetting for us. Our people, um, we have different customs, we um, have different ways of life, um, but they, in many cases, they attack us for it. They impose the state of siege and they violated our rights. So um, we don't want dialogue. We know that our people aren't garbage. We're not people who they can just grab and then throw away. Um, they have to respect us. So we don't want dialogue with the company. Um, the court was clear. The process should take place between the Shinka people and the state of Guatemala. Muchas gracias para vuestras respuestas, Luis Fernando y Don Celso. Um, unfortunately, we're running out of time, folks. Um, so we just want to thank everyone who came out and participated. Uh, we apologize for those who asked really meaningful questions that we didn't get to. Um, we will be sharing those questions uh, with the panelists uh, and encourage you to get in touch. Our contact information uh, is throughout. We have it in the digital campaign, which again um, is in the chat for folks who uh, are interested in finding out more about how they can help. Um, so please, please check it out. Uh, it's very, it takes less than two minutes uh, to click the link that was just shared uh, on salsalabs.com, send a message to Pan American Silver, Ensure that they understand that we are watching, that they can't take advantage of the pandemic um, to advance their, their goals and further endanger the Shinka community. 
Um, and we also want to thank all of the endorsing organizations uh, that supported this webinar uh, and make our work possible on a continued basis. Uh, there are only over 35 of them, um, so we won't be listing them in full, uh, but they will be in the chat box um, so folks can uh, check that out, uh, see who has been so essential to this undertaking. Uh, and again, uh, please do keep in touch. Um, we understand that especially during COVID, uh, now that most things have moved online, I think we are closer than ever and have more access to, to working together to make sure that uh, by the time the AGM rolls around for Pan American Silver, our message is clear and that we continue to support indigenous solidarity and sovereignty efforts across North and South America and the Silkwati Nation uh, in the Shinka community. Uh, so once again, please join me in uh, thanking all of our panelists, all of our interpreters, Alan and Lisan. Um, thank you so much again, Carmen, Blaine, Luis Fernando, and Don Celso. Ya se nos va acabando el tiempo. Muchas gracias a todos que vinieron, todos que participaron. Perdón que no logramos con todas las preguntas, pero los vamos a compartir con los panelistas y esperamos poder mantener en comunicación. Eh, no se olviden de tomar acción, que toda la información está en el chat. Eh, muchas gracias a todas las organizaciones, más que 30 cinco que nos apoyaron con eso son esenciales para uh, nuestro trabajo y ahora con la pandemia estamos muchos en, en el internet en línea y estamos más unidos que siempre que vamos a trabajar siempre que vamos a estar listos cuando llega la reunión eh, anual de Pan American en dos semanas eh, muchas gracias a todos que pasen buena noche muchas gracias gracias a, a todos Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Kareem. You were amazing. Thanks, Kirsten. Thanks for plugging Thank everything you, in the Blake, chat. Carmen. That was excellent. Muchas gracias, Luis Fernando y Don Celso. Que tengan buena noche. Gracias a ustedes por el apoyo. Hasta luego. Entonces, Celso, mucho gusto. Gracias, igual los esperamos. ¿no? Adiós. Carmen. Sí. Adiós. Mucho gusto de verlos hola. Se cuiden mucho y estamos hablando pronto. Nos hablamos y muchas gracias. Sí. Les mando un abrazo grande a la distancia. Thanks a lot, Blaine and Carmen. Thank Hasta you. luego. You were excellent. Adiós. It was great <laughs> work, everyone. Take care. Say bye to you. Say, say bye. 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 Bye, Paloma. Bye, Lucy. Bye, Paloma. Have a good night, guys. Aquí estaba Paloma escuchando, eh? Ay, qué bueno. Estaba escuchando. Chao, Paquita. Ah, ahí viene a saludar. Bye. 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 Bye.